How the heck are you, everybody? I'm Fastidious, welcome to my channel, and welcome to my guide for Gear Aid 4 Stage 6. This has been an absolute roller coaster working on this thing. I've learned so much about the ins and outs of this stage, and I did challenge myself to do this without Valkyra, because she's kind of the ultimate cheat code for this. That being said, I do use some great heroes. I tried to scale everything back when I could as much as possible, but for such hard endgame content, I could only scale back so much. So this comp is really going to feature Virna, Comet, and Mari. Those are kind of the three key units here. Oh, and Artemis, obviously. Artemis. That's kind of my quad. I hope this can help a lot of people. I really do. At the very least it should teach you a ton about how the stage works if you want to see guides on earlier stages those are definitely coming in the coming days so without further ado enjoy the guide please let me know in the comments if it helps you let's get into it fastidious fastidious Alrighty, here we are doing gear raid for stage six i'm going for the most accessible comp i could figure out you might complain that it's not that accessible. This is super hard end game content. I tried to trim the fat as much as I could. You can see we're not using any Valkyra, nothing like that. We're bringing four different epic heroes, some of the better ones in the game, but I'm doing my darndest here. Two of them totally free. The other ones you'll get eventually. We do have one legendary Lord that's gonna be uh, Morgan over here, then Artemis. We got him A1, we got Virna A1, we've got Comet A3. It's, it's good stuff. You'll see at the end, my gear isn't so, so special, um, but it takes a lot. It takes a lot to do this. We are not bringing Valkyra. Valkyra is just completely cracked out. Cheat code mode. Cheat code mode, that sounds fun, for this stage. So we're going to leave her at home. If you do have her, though, there's already content out there. Definitely go check it out. She makes it way easier. But this is the team we are going to rock. So without further ado, Power of Dominance again is disabled. Let's get into it. I will say, you're going to see me struggle a lot with the Virna timing. That is because I don't have her maxed at all. The only thing I have maxed is her basic attack, which we really, really don't need. Uh, all of her damage is coming from Mortal Kiss, which doesn't qualify as basic attack. Uh, it's just placed by the basic attack, and then it's coming from the ultimate. If I could get 100 less skill costs, it would make all the difference in the world. So if you want to follow this guide and you see how frustrated I get and how tight it all is, it doesn't have to be like that for you. Uh, just max this out. I can't do it right now, but with this maxed out, you'd be good to go. However, we've done it several times successfully without it maxed out. So it is what it is, baby. Let's get into it. We'll break down all the builds at the end. Let's begin our run. So let's start things off. It's super technical. They do a great job of pulling your eyes in all different directions. Honestly, it's really fun content, I think. It's supremely challenging, but it's really re rewarding. This is like why I've grown to love tower defense, you know? But boy, boy, does it make me wanna rage. So basically you gotta get Virna down, then Elowin. Uh, you could also do Olog, then Elowin, but the sooner Elowin's down, the sooner Virna's building rage. It just makes things a little comfier. Um, but Olog needs to be down as soon as you can put him down if you're going to go Virna then Elowin because he needs to take the aggro as you're seeing from the boss. For anyone who doesn't know, the boss has this ability, uh, whereas it, Blood Banquet prioritizes attacking defenders. So if you don't have a defender down, she's just going to snipe all your non-tanky units. So get Olog down as soon as Dolores is ready. We can place her. She's giving Invig to Virna, but so is Elowin. So if you only got one good set... I don't know how you're doing 4-6, but if that's the case, just make sure you, you place it properly. But you see, I have a, I actually have it on Dolores just because it's a great set for Dolores. And she's also getting a 10% attack boost, which helps my Virna a lot. And helps her because she needs to do a lot of healing, as you're going to see. So you see, Virna's ult is ready. That's why I wanted to place Elwin first. As soon as it's ready, just trigger. She's not going to kill this guy or anything, but it really doesn't matter. She's in, in Soulbound Arcana, so we just want to start clicking ults as much as possible and she would just be sitting on this for a really long time anyway so it's just going to help her build stacks and get towards that max 50 percent damage boost place mari here facing to the left mari's amazing she's you know she's obviously a free hero she's going to put out tons of slows and tons of magic vulnerability and i'll even use her ult a lot blizzard even though it can't freeze people because it's a big aoe it kind of eliminates some RNG of like where the magic vulnerability and slows are landing because this still places icicles, which still leads to slows and still leads to magic vulnerability consequently. But basically we hold everything else out here. As soon as we get an ult ready that we don't need and we're not going to need anytime soon, no reason not to use it because Soulbound Arcana is still bugged. So this is going to help Virna uh, get stacks and later on you'll see we'll do a similar thing to help Comet. We can also trigger Olog. You know, a lot of people don't trigger Olog's ult, but why not? We're about to kill this fool anyway. 
As soon as Broke here is ready, we can place him up here. You might see it's been pretty precarious over here with the health of Dolores. You might be thinking, why don't I use the Wood Elf, the little Treant, uh, to help out from Elowin? Well, actually, and I'll show you the Dolores build later, I built her with a lot of heal effects so she can do all the healing herself. And also, if you heal her up too quickly, she's not doing basic attacks to heal herself, so she's not generating as much rage. Uh, so for me, I find that works the best. Now that we have another defender down and we, we killed that fool, so we don't need Olog taking aggro because the, the archer's targeting him, we can pick up Olog. We're good to go there. And now the fun begins, the really, really fun stuff. So as soon as this guy's about to enter this square, that's when we can trigger Dolores. We wait, we wait. Artemis is ready, so we might as well place him there. Now we're keeping our eye on the back, the back uh, mob here. As soon as he's straddling these two squares, that's when I'm gonna trigger Mari. Let's wait right about there so we trigger Mari and I just keep an eye on the damage thresholds on how things are landing where slows are landing and that's when we're gonna trigger Virna that looks close the back guy might hold on I hope not and he didn't we just got it uh, you might notice if you try this there's endless visual bugs where people are clearly so obviously under 20 under 35 percent let alone all oftentimes often 25 percent and you still don't get the execute clearly there's something wrong Program programmatically between what is happening in truth internally and what we're getting to see here. And it is the bane of my existence. I hate it so much. Let's wait now. 19 costs, we can get Comet out, and now we can start uh, stacking some ults towards Comet, Soulbound Arcana set he's in. So let's uh, trigger Artemis there. He's not doing anything, right? He's just healing, I guess, when he's doing his ult now. Uh, when there's no one to hit, he just does those big heals. Doesn't really matter. Uh, it's really just to build those stacks because he's gonna have plenty of time to build his ult up again So you can see we could heal Dolores here, but we're not gonna we'll let her do it herself It's pretty good big heals by her low standards. We can do Elowin for the same reason. We just did Artemis We wait we wait we wait Loading up pretty good. So here's a good uh, rule of thumb I found at least from my account when this front guy is lining up with this post here and this line uh, that is a great uh, uh, whoop. That's a great oper That's a great uh, metric to check. If Virna is at least at 60%, you're in good shape. You know, towards her rage buildup, uh, more is way better. But at least 60. Otherwise, you're gonna have a really bad time. So let's wait here. We're gonna do the same method. So when this back guy here is straddling those two squares, we wait, we wait, we wait. All right, that's when we trigger. Ooh, I was a little late with Dolores, but it's okay. So now we really keep an eye. We don't need to be as we can be slightly more delayed with Virna. So when that front guy's about halfway, that's probably a good time. After that, he's gonna make it to the portal. They're all dead. As soon as they're dead, we can pick up Mari, we can place Olog, uh, and we can place Laurel here. So Laurel's in an Invig set, so she's gonna be buffing Comet uh, and then with, with Invigoration. And then obviously we'll pick her up after we triggered Comet's ult and Artemis' ult so they get the damage boost from her passive. Don't do it while her ultimate's going. I just learned that. Shout out to MDL man. Otherwise, she doesn't place the boost. She only does it if she's not ulting. And then once that's happened, then you can pick her up. So, so Comet will get the big rage boost. Um, all right. So let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. So first part done. And that's the part where there's not so much RNG. I get that done almost every time. It's really between the third and fourth waves on the bottom that I lose my gosh darn mind. Seriously. So here, when Crimson Moon is about halfway to finished with this countdown bar, that's when you can start your triggers. So we'll wait closer to finished. Now we go Artemis, then Comet, then we place the Treant. Wait a second. Wait till Broke here takes a little damage. All right, now we'll tr trigger Broke here. We can trigger Elowin again to help out Comet on top. Now he's getting towards max stacks. And you can see we've triggered Comet and, uh, and Artemis. Now we can pick up, uh, they got the damage boost. You can see over here. Uh, oh, it's not showing up right now. Uh, maybe it already expired. Is it showing up? Oh yeah, I guess, I guess not. It only lasts eight seconds. So you know, with the two X, it, you know, with, with everything happening, the eight seconds might be up. But that's happened. Now we can pick her up, and she'll give the big rage boost to Comet. You can still pick her up while he's ulting. He'll just get the boost. It will show up after he finishes ulting. Uh, we can kind of, you can see like, why am I not already placing Morgan? I don't want to distract. This is enough damage as it is on top with Artemis and uh, Comet. No reason to distract heals and, and take heals that could be going to Broke here or Artemis and Comet and have them go to Morrigan. We just don't need her. So we wait. We might as well trigger Olog because why not? You know, I, am I maxed on Soulbound Arcana stacks? I think, but I don't know 100% for sure. So let's go. I could count, but there's too many other things going on. They really divert your eyes to every corner of the map. It is nuts. This is such, it, this really feels like endgame content, and that's really cool. It feels really rewarding for that. 
So as soon as Mari's ready, we can get her down. Keeping an eye on top. So you can see Comet had a ton, a big rage boost from when we picked up Laurel. And then Artemis is getting tons of rage naturally from his blood craving. And I built some rage regen on him as well. I'll show all the builds at the end. Hopefully this is a successful run. So these guys are about to take aggro. All right, this is the crazy part. There's so much stuff to look at. So let's wait. As soon as Artemis is ready, we'll trigger him, then Comet, then Broke here. But we also have to pay attention to here. So when this guy is getting towards this line, that's when we can trigger Dolores. Uh, Artemis is ready. So trigger, trigger, trigger. Let's get the Treant down. Uh, let's wait a second for the Treant, actually. It looks like we're kind of good. Yeah, now we'll do the Treant. We don't need to do Mari here. We just need her getting slows. And I need to do this as early as possible so it comes back around. You would not have this issue if you weren't like me and you had the ult max skilled. But because it, it's, a, it's a tighter window. I, I've, I've timed it out. It's a tighter window between the first and second wave on the bottom than the third and fourth. It's, I guess it's not something I can be angry about because it's not like they said it was, this, was the same amount or wasn't. But I assumed it was and it clearly isn't. So let's wait. We're gonna try to as early as we can. Let's see. I think I'm gonna go for it now. It's super tight, but I think we're gonna go for it. We're gonna go trigger, trigger. And we did get it. Wow, okay, so and I'm looking pretty ahead of schedule. Uh, so that's really nice. I usually do around 76 costs. I really wish there was an in-game clock, but we did about 75 and we did pull it off. I did kind of waste Samari's ult or waste. I don't know if you call it a waste. It worked, but that means we can't use it here, but we should have the flexibility that we're okay. Brokeer's taking way too much damage up there, so all right, come on, heal him up, Artemis. So Artemis is in ulting, so now he's back to healer mode. Uh, Laurel's ready, let's place her, and now let's immediately pick her up. See that big uh, rage boost comet just got? Oh boy, it's so sweaty. Uh, I've put so many, so many, so many hours into this the past 24 hours. It's just outrageous. Even right now, I've been streaming for four hours just prepping to film this guide. All right, let's get it, let's get it. So here we go. As soon as she's ready, we can trigger Dolores because we're a little behind schedule, like always happens here. And you can see I said 60 and we're at like 63 when he's a little past. So it's still going to be insanely tight. It's really going to come down to some slow RNG, making sure Mari lands all those slows on the front guys. I don't know if we've got it. I don't know if we do. Also paying attention up top. Oh, come on, guys. I'm not going to trigger the ult because we need to get keep slows out so we have time. And I think I'm just going to just miss it. Trigger, 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 and now I'm just hammering Virna. Come on. Did we just get it? I think we just got it. Yes. Oh, my God. Holy crap. Let's get the Treant down. Oh, my God. That was. You see how sweaty this is, right? You see why I'm losing my mind. Anyone who's caught me on stream, I've been losing my mind. This stuff is way too sweaty. All right, we can get uh, Morgan down now to help with some DPS. We don't need to place Olog because I can freeze here with Mari. The, the only people that people are like it's freeze immune actually these archers they're the only mobs in the whole game that are not freeze immune these skeleton archers so there you have it we pick them off and as soon as these guys die everybody except for elowin can come out obviously elowin's staying because she's got her global map wide boost you can see though we're looking pretty good because we also have uh olog in the chamber so we're waiting for artemis to heal up uh, as soon as uh, laurel's ready actually we're, we can already pick up morgan basically because we need to get laurel out to boost comet Whew, this might be it, guys. This might be it. Everything's looking really, really, really nice. But again, I want to reiterate, this does not... Yeah, okay, let's get her up. Now let's down and up. Oh, you know what we can actually do? Let's get a quick boost uh, for Artemis. Give me one sec. Cause, so let's, let's not pick up Laurel until Artemis already gets the damage boost, so you'll watch it happen. We can already get this down. So trigger. You see he's got the boost now. Uh, plus 20% damage. Now we can pick her up. Now we can do Comet. Now we can do Broke here. And I think this is going to be it, guys. But yeah, it doesn't need to be that sweaty. If you had Virna maxed out, you would not have the problems I've been having. And you'd have you'd be able to maintain so much more of your sanity than I've been, a been, been able to do. So let's see. That's a GG. Finally, finally, finally. Actually, it was only the second attempted time at filming. But I've done so, so much rehearsing to make sure I feel super comfortable in the stage. Uh, for anyone who caught me on stream yesterday, I tried it originally without Comet, then I tried with Gluttony, I tried a lot of extreme things, I never even brought in Valkyra, because I do want to make this super accessible for everybody, but on top of that, it's also really important that I get my reps in, you know, people are wanting takeovers for this, people are going to want more guides for this, they're going to want new strategies, and this was a great way, you know, it took me however many million hours, but this was a great way for me to kind of 
buff up my chops, if you will, and, and improve a lot at this. Uh, this isn't the worst piece in the world, but we will not be keeping it. There we go. So let's get into the builds. I really hope that helps you guys. And again, if you watch this guide and you feel very discouraged because it's like, oh, there was a legendary lord, there was a lot of great legendary heroes. Guys, that is what this content is. This is the ultimate endgame content we have in the game currently. If we look at recommended lineups, I mean, first off, every single team has Valkyra, basically. And then if you can find one that doesn't have one, uh, so far I can't. Uh, no, so far everyone has one. Oh, here we go. Then, oh, it's me. <laughs> it's me. Um, but you can see, like, you know, legendary lords left and right, you know, comets, Virnas, Valkyras. You need these top top tier heroes. Eventually, hopefully, we will figure out clever things. You can see, uh, like this one, they did use Valkyra, which doesn't make it easier, but pretty cool, right? No legendary lords. I mean, that's great. Valkyra opens up that option. They do have Virna over here with the skin and stuff, but they're in cool stuff with Greed and Constance. Uh, I've been trying a ton of stuff as well, so it's not like you need this, that, and the other, but you gotta have something somewhere, you know? Like, you can't make concessions on everything, at least for now. We're gonna work on some strategies. I've been talking with Ronaldo. I know he's been working on some amazing stuff. I was talking with Quaz. So stay tuned. We've got a great community of content creators. We've got a great player base as well, you know, a lot of cool stuff in Watcher Realm, still good vibes, so I think we'll figure out new things. But again, this is like proper endgame content. Level 88, level 100, level 89, level 86, level 80. I mean, you, you really see how, it, how it's going. So it's something aspirational. When it comes to the lower stages, I'll make separate uh, content for that, probably as I do more takeovers. But that's kind of where we settle. All right, so let's get into the gearing. Uh, first off, I'll show Pantheon. I know people really like when we show that now. My Pantheon, I would say for, I think I'm on day 237, slightly underdeveloped. I've missed Pantheon days here and there. But you can see these two just under level 40 at 39 and 39, uh, getting the HP bonus. And this one's the attack bonus and the attack speed bonus. This one also has some heal effect. And then this one I've got pretty good on 47. We've got 6% attack bonus, 11.5% crit damage. And then this is the basic trial main one, nearly getting close to maxed out. It maxes out at level 80, right? So big HP bonus and some nice rage regen. So let's show the heroes. Let's go back to gear raid four, excuse me. Back to gear raid four now. Let's hop in and let's see. So we've got Morgan over here. Uh, I placed her for all of two seconds. She's in actually super accessible build. Pretty normal curse gear over here, especially for an account as advanced as mine. You know, totally normal piece here. She, she didn't matter too much. For Artifact, uh, we ran her in a title ring. That's part of the other reason I brought her. I didn't have any crowd control effects on top, so this was a way of getting just a touch. But you could see Artemis was putting out pretty good damage as it stood. Um, unfortunately, I didn't show damage, I realized. But I'm wondering, I'm wondering, before people yell at me, if I go to Guides and go to my recommended lineups. Will it show my damage? Will it show my damage? Yes, sir, it will. What a lifesaver. So you can see Virna coming in at 86.6 million, Comet at 30.3, Artemis really, really nice at 13.3, uh, and then that's basically it. Uh, but the cool thing to note is Artemis is wearing so many hats. He's my only healer on the top, he's our anti-heal on the top, and he's putting out some proper damage to help out Comet. So let's go back in. I'm really happy they did that. I would have felt pretty bad if I wasn't able to show you guys that. Let's now go to Artemis. Now we're getting into some of the better builds. He's in a Euphoric Orb. If you had um, a, a nice Golden Scarab to put him in, that would be better. But I only had one, and in the end I found I needed it for Dolores just because it was a way to get high attack like we would get from the Keen Wisdom. But I also needed some HP so she could heal herself properly and not die and not need the Treant so I could focus the, the Wood Elf on the top, you know? For his gear, I actually went Ageless Wrath. I find Ageless Wrath to be an amazing set. If I had a great third Soulbound Arcana set, that would be awesome. But I found this was better than Infernal Roar that I had. I had some nice pieces, and I was able to get him a nice build and take advantage of the A1, where I only needed 47% crit rate, because we're getting 50% uh, percent when he's ulting from the A1. Uh, that's 50% crit rate right there. And because he's a cultist, you get 3%. So this allowed me to get a pretty cool build. So we're going attack bonus basically on everything. We got one crit damage piece over here, looking for lots of attack speed. And then over here, I've completely neglected crit rate on both my weapon and bangle, a uh, weapon and breastplate, excuse me, getting my Bs confused. But both these come with some really nice attack speed and rage regen on a DPS set. So because of that, I got him at 40.5% rage regen with that 36 or 36 and a half from my Pantheon. That's really nice. He's getting close to that soft cap of 100%. Uh, he's a little bit over crit cap because we only needed 47, like I said. So this comes out to 59. So we're like we're 12 over. Well, it's it's really nine over because we needed 47 plus this three. So we're nine percent over, but plenty crit damage and plenty attack. 19.1 attack, crit damage coming in at 30, 372 and a half. Attack speed at 363. A little faster would be nice, but you can see we needed the DPS 1.7 seconds. 
Uh, and yeah, you know, there's there's ancients left and right on these heroes, but this is really proper endgame content. That's going to be Artemis. Let's keep going right down the line. Virna. My Virna build is good. It could definitely be better, right? Uh, showing you now, we got attack bonus here. No crit damage on this piece, but I needed the Rage Regen. That's the only way it was going to work. However, I could have gone for a different piece. I could have gone for something like this, maybe, if I had this maxed out, right? And I will say, ooh, while we're here, my Artemis has max skills. My Morrigan, not that we used her, has all but her passive maxed out. She, this wouldn't even matter because she wasn't on the floor for that long to get the, the time bonuses she needed. If we go back to Virna, so you can see, originally my first clear, if you guys caught on stream, I had no skill ups in the basic attack. Then I got some skill crystals today from when I reset Boreas. I was like, hey, if we could just land this, that'd be pretty nice. And all four landed right here. This really doesn't help her, like I said, because all her damage basically is coming from Mortal Kiss and is coming from the ultimate. Um, so that's going to be Virna. Uh, so we did need that Rage Regen. There's attack bonus, crit rate, flat attack, Rage Regen. Here we got attack bonus, crit rate, crit damage, attack speed. It's good gear, nice ancients. Crit damage here, all blues, but a nice crit rate roll. And because of that crit rate roll, we could go light crit rate on some of these pieces, so 14 and a half, but we got this huge attack bonus roll and really nice crit damage roll. This is like one of my best weapons. Um, and then here you can see, it actually probably is my best weapon. This is one that I think I ascended. Um, from being Calamity into Warlord. Here, big crit damage roll, and that's going to be crit rate with attack bonus. Low attack bonus roll, unfortunately. So it all comes out. There's some nice rolls there, but it's not the craziest build. 16.7 is nice, just over 300% at 312.5 and exactly crit capped, but I needed that Rage Regen, so I had to have a couple things, have a couple concessions. You can see, no attack speed. Virna does not need attack speed. It says it right there on her kit. Uh, attack speed does not affect her basic attacks, and that's the only thing attack speed would affect. So there you go. That is going to be my Virna. She's in a maxed out tier of Twilight. While we're here, Comet, he's in a plus 16 promotion level 2 tier of Twilight. So this would have also helped me and made things a little less sweaty if that was max. Comet, all ancient gear. Um, you can see attack bonus, some nice stuff. Crit damage, some nice stuff. This is something that could have fit really nicely um, with that heal effect, that huge heal effect. That could have worked really nicely on Artemis. Uh, crit damage with nice stuff. It, it's, it's all pretty good. Uh, here, attack bonus. No crit damage on this, but we did get attack speed because it's an ancient. And here, again, no crit damage on this ancient, but we did get big attack bonus and a nice crit rate and attack speed. A little too much crit rate on this guy, but 15.8 over crit cap, 1.3 second interval. We cut that thing in half. Didn't re He doesn't need this much attack speed. This is just the build we got on him. And then just over 300% crit damage. It's not that amazing a build. Go check out other comments and Viernas. A lot of people are doing a lot better stuff than me. And again, I apologize. I wanted to find a way to make it work without Comet. I will still make that my goal, but for now, I did need him. Uh, you can check out my stream for my my first five hours. We're struggling to do it without Comet. I put Comet in, and we got it in like an hour. Uh, so that's going to be Comet, and he is also max skilled. Let's keep going now. Let's just go right down the list again. We got Broke here. He's in a Guardian set. It's pretty good gear, but not too good gear. Lots of blue. And again, lots of blue. And here, this is like the one good piece I had for him. Uh, it comes out to 111k HP, defense at 8.5k. This is not a crazy build at all. This is like not even really an end game build. I do have Guardian set, but this is much more of like a late game build. That's why he was struggling so much. If I had brought a Solda instead of a, instead of of course Olog, that would have helped a lot. And we didn't need Olog. He was just an extra thing, and a Solda would have fit really nicely behind Broke Gear for the end too. So I really suggest you do that instead. And then that Lord bonus in the shields would help him so so much. Uh, but basically, that's what's going on here. I believe he's in a promo 2, or excuse me, promo 3 Bastion Ring, plus 16. That is nice. Uh, and yeah, that's our broke here. Let's keep moving along. Now we got Laurel. Her build does not matter. She just needs an Invig set. This is just the normal gear I have her in. I believe this is, or maybe this is a slightly modified version of my normal Guild Boss build. Uh, yeah, you can see the attack is a little low, but a nice Rage Regen. It doesn't matter since we never used her ult. She just needs Invig. Uh, if you miss time, maybe you need her tanky enough to take one hit. But if you get your timings right, she doesn't even need to take a hit. This could all be not leveled. Artifact also doesn't matter. So for that, I put a Heaven's Rage on her. I did this just for stats, just for the 3100 HP. That's literally it. Uh, we're taking full advantage here of her talent, the 50% uh, Rage Restoration to Surrounding Allies. For the way I did it, the only Surrounding Ally is going to be Comet. Uh, this is not just death. Also, when you when you remove her from the battlefield, when you retreat her, that also works for anyone who doesn't know. And then here is the damage increase. Again, shout out to MDL man who who turned me on to the fact that this effect won't trigger if she's ulting. So that's why we didn't ult with her. Not that we really needed to. But definitely max skill your Laurel because this is super useful for a lot of content, especially like Gear Aid 1. And then this is useful for all content. I mean, a 20% damage increase, it's huge. Just a 1.2x multiplier on whatever was going to happen anyway. So that's going to be Laurel. Let's keep marching. 
Pretty traditional build on my Dolores, very close to my normal Dolores build, except I took her out of the Keen Wisdom again for that Golden Scarab. Uh, not really for the Rage Regen as much as that big HP bonus, and then still getting some attack from the flat attack uh, stat bonus and the 5% boost. Uh, but really, I needed that 4300 HP because we needed her to have some tankiness. She's still only at 24.8, but combine the 24.8 with the fact that we still got a lot of attack on her. Attack bonus, flat attack, attack bonus, flat attack. Oh, no, yeah, flat attack, attack bonus, uh, flat attack. Um, then we got some nice flat attack, attack bonus. I can do way better, right? I've got better options. Or that, that's not a good example. Let me show you. Uh, oh, my God. Believe me, I've got better options. But this is this way we actually got some heal effect on her, and that is how she was able to survive the whole fight. Dolores, the healer. Uh, here you go, on Constance. Like, this is way better, right? Or even this would be better. But getting that heal effect on her, this allowed her to keep herself up and we could use the Wood Elf elsewhere. Because on initial versions of this comp, I had to focus the Wood Elf on her for lots of the fight. If we look over there now, we got attack bonus. And again, we could do better probably. Uh, could have I done... I, I What was I doing here? I, I actually could have gone way better. I could have put like this on her. I guess the attack bonus I thought was too low. But another 20 heal effect would be pretty sweet. That being said, there's a soft cap at 100. You see we got her at 82 and we have a nice contribution as well from the Pantheon. All in all, it's a pretty good build with the 95-75 with the big artifact as well. We're at 13-6, but the 24-8 and then the 82 heal effect, that's kind of what, what we needed. We got heals up to about 1,700, which is what we needed between that 16 and 1,700. Before that, she was at like 1,500 and she was dying. So that was what I found to be the breakpoint, at least for my account. That is going to be Dolores. For Mari, speed, 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 nothing else matters. Uh, Rage Regen doesn't even matter because it comes up fast enough as it is. This is my biggest attack speed roll. We went Rage Regen just because this is my biggest attack speed roll on any ring on my account. Here we have attack speed, and then I was looking for HP bonus. The Rage Regen is a bonus. Uh, and then here, HP bonus. I wanted that as the main, so she had some tankiness, so she couldn't get wiped uh, by the big AoEs, the Crimson Moon. And then again, a big attack speed bonus. Here, I didn't have any Ancient that had attack speed on the breastplate. And then believe it or not, this is, this is actually my second highest attack speed roll on my whole account, but it's 69, so I chose this. The other one was 71, so I figure... Why not do the 69? We were rolling that earlier on stream. I have earned a max out Nightmare Samsara. You definitely could do a lower promotion of this, but this helps make sure we get the ult coming up. Just to go through her skills, here she has Icicle. Attack triggered Icicles inflict slow upon target, and this is any attack does this, right? Meanwhile, targets inflicted with slow by Mari will receive the vulnerability and the magic damage. Uh, what, to my knowledge, any this is any attack. That, that's what I have found. So the reason I was doing this big AOE, and shout out to, I don't remember the name, someone suggested using the ult on stream, and I kind of was like, what are you talking about? But this is a proper AOE. It can hit everybody in the range. And I do think she, from what I've seen, it seems like she places icicles, which means this is a sure way to get an AOE magic uh, vulnerability. We don't care about the physical damage vulnerability, right? But because we are able to get that, um, it's a lot more sure than relying on the basic attack, which can hit multiple targets, right? Um, three random targets she's casting the icicles at. However, it's it, I, there was too much RNG. Sometimes it worked beautifully, sometimes it didn't. I needed a solution because I was like, I'm going to have to film this, and I, I can only beat my head against the wall so many times. So that was my solution. Am I crazy? I don't know. Did they call, call this a freeze and it still apply to CC effect even though they weren't crowd controlled? Maybe. I don't know. At the end of the day, it works, uh, and I'm happy. And Mari, I think, I think I'm the first person I've seen using Mari. I think she's a really clever... She, at least her, she's a free-to-play option, right? You get her for free on day three. She's a lot more easy to get dupes for Awakenings and get her A5 than someone like Greed, who you also get for free on day 28. But Greed is like, I've only ever pulled Greed once ever on my whole account. And I even tried Greed. And personally for me, I found Mari works a lot better. So that's going to be Mari. Olog is in an interesting build here. I'm running in, him in Asclepius. It doesn't matter, but I don't mind the heal effect. I'll just click through all the gear because uh, I have him in a North's Will, not in a Bastion Ring, because we don't really need him to block. He's never blocking more than two people, and this allows him to get some big heals when his shields pop off, so he can kind of be a little extra tanky. And this does scale with, scale with heal effect, so shout out to New Name who taught me that a month or two ago. So this he's, he had some really big heals if you go back and watch when that shield pops off, because this max out is really nice. It could even work at zero promo, though. Totally good. Or just run a Bastion Ring, whatever you want. I just thought it'd be fun to use a Legendary Artifact. Now, I showed you Comet already, and finally, Elowin doesn't matter. I have her in Invig because it helps, and this is this is like similar to a normal Elowin build for me. Uh, if she can ult more, it helps build those Soulbound Arcana stacks, but she kind of does enough healing all by herself. Just give her a nice chunk of attack. I didn't even really do that. A lot of attack speed. I did probably too much of that. And Rage Regen is nice for the ultimate. 
just give her any kind of healer build. Asclepius would be fine. Broken Set would be fine. I went Invig. She does buff herself with this as well. She, I think she placed it. Uh, she did place it on Vierna, but I could have placed her later and it would have landed on uh, Olog. Doesn't matter. My tip, though, and this is a big tip, and I know a lot of uh, high-end players are like, I posted about it in Discord. I was like, hey, I just learned this, guys. Did people know this? And everyone's like, you didn't know that? Elysian Epitaph works on her. It says increases healing effects single target, but I assume what they mean by single target now that I've tested it is only AoE it doesn't affect. So they're counting her multi-target heals, her triple heals on her basic attack here to three tar allies in range. They're counting that as single target, and this leads to some huge heals. So that'd be my one tip. This could totally work at base promotion. Those are all the builds, guys. This was quite the doozy. If you appreciate this stuff, please let me know in the comments. If there's specific stuff you want to see, you can let me know. It's all going to take me a while. This is new terrain. I believe this is a pretty accessible thing I figured out. It's obviously not perfect yet. I would love for there to be a lot more purple. I'd love to get Morgan out. Um, but I will say, uh, you know, you need a different build on Artemis, but he clearly would work at A0, just probably a slightly higher gear requirement. But it could be the same gear uh, as long as he was crit. crit crit capped excuse me with less attack and crit damage if you had a better better build in your comet you saw my comet build wasn't that great for the level of content we're doing Vierna could be so easy and so plug and play with dolores the way i was using her if you had her maxed out here and you had a better build than me so there's ways that i think it can be adapted really nicely again i would definitely use a solda uh or of course king hearts who i also have i would definitely use a lord uh not dagna but a solda king hearts um over over olog maybe even elder could tank it i don't know if you build them as a tank uh, but yeah, those are my suggestions. I really, really hope this helps you guys. This was so much work. I've been streaming today for four and a half hours. I streamed nine hours yesterday. Uh, you know, figuring out what we needed to do took long enough, but then trying to make all these concessions. Boy, oh boy. Why did they have to nerf my mole? That's all I can say. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I've been Facetious. If you like my stuff, like it, subscribe, share with your mother, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank Jesus. Oh my God. Fast idiots.